What does he have? What is Klaus using in his blimp here? He's got clone balloons and Yetis in a in a bomb. That's weird. <laughs> That's out of the ordinary. Normally we see just cloned Yetis or cloned air troops, but not a mix. That's a big chunk of the base they're taking out. Like that took out more than it's still going. The blues are still going. Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Clash with Eric, and welcome to the World Championship Qualifiers. We have 64 teams. We need to turn it into 16 teams over the course of the next few wars here. And then the weekend after, they're going to play through a Swiss bracket, and they're going to narrow it down to eight. And then the weekend after that, on September 10th, they're going to narrow it down to four teams. Those four teams are going to move on to the Clash of Clans World Championship and all be awarded golden tickets. But today's match is the Queen Walkers taking on NGT as these teams fight to join the ranks of the other four teams that have already qualified for the World Championship. Those would be X Team, MS Esports, Tribe Gaming, and Strut Esports. But we're kicking off here with God as he's already underway in the attack here. Got the defensive world champion and the scatter shot out of the top corner of the base there he was able to take out the cc and the inferno across the middle of the base there with the skelly donut while the queen tries to dive into the town hall but she's kind of running low on hp and there's a ground expo up ahead that's gonna be a bit of a problem here i don't know if he has enough to make it through the queen has to go around right oh he needs to start oh no right out of the gate here we're potentially facing some problems he goes to activate the town hall so he can instead take it with the flame flinger Flame Thicker should be able to secure it there with the Queen already clearing the majority of the traps there. And it's also going to be able to pick up that single Inferno as well. A nice adjustment there. That should do the trick. And now we can focus in on the Lalo. Because that Flame Flinger secures its position over there. Lalo's going to have the Hounds cross over and get in front of the Balloons here pretty quickly. I like their positioning right now. He's got more Balloons coming to the bottom corner. The Flame Flinger is... 100% going to secure that town hall as the Eagle Artillery goes down. There's the ward ability. Where are the Headhunters, though? Headhunters are on to the King right now. Lots of pups are there as well. And they need to get over to the Queen. He'll freeze up the Queen with the scatter shot for now. But that's not going to get him through forever. And he still doesn't have the town hall down. The Blues are making their approach. That Flame Flinger needs to work faster. Start to freeze it to try to hold off that damage until the Blues can get safe after that town hall goes down. Oh man, that flame flinger needs to do more damage faster. That's gonna be a problem. But wait, if they get the expo, the flame flinger can finish off the base. Ward is working onto the battle builder. Flame flinger is going to the inferno. He needs to get over to the the wizard tower, but he's still okay here. He's got 22 seconds to make his way through. I think the warden is going to clutch it here. Warden turns south though. Okay, he's still okay. He'll go one shot those and he'll get back over to the wizard tower. The flame flinger has that under control. Here comes the CC troops and he's got it. God pulls that one back. It was looking a little bit rough, but he's able to pull it back in and he's got the triple against Gaku. Nice job. Now it's time for Gaku's revenge. Daniel on defense here. Coming in with a queen charge into Lala with a flame flinger. Queen's gonna, I think, I don't know which way she goes here. Does she go up or down? No, she's going to end up going down. Or she just attacks the wall. <laughs> you know, because that's what queens do. Uh, he's going to go ahead and throw down the flame flinger on the right side and cut off all the trash over on that right side. It's going to make its way pretty deep in the base there pretty quickly. And it actually might uh, end up going into the expo here if the queen holds the attention and gives it the protection because there's only three defenses in that corner there for the flame flinger to initially go after so it should be able to move through there pretty quickly but the king in the bottom corner there is going to cut off the pathing on that side and he needs to get the queen to go all the way in here and take the town hall down defensive warning goes down no drama with that he has to pop the king ability a little bit early because the queen is trying to veer off path here but he's able to get her course correct here and she is going the wrong way queen get back in action here don't okay she at least goes to the inside but a double black mine goes off on her heel is here oh gaku oh gaku come on being turned back to the middle there. The CC should pull her in. Yep, the headhunters are a target that she can lock onto. She will walk her way in and she will fight off the lava hound and she takes the inferno. Nope, not quite. Doesn't take that inferno down. Needs to get the last strike on it. Whatever healers are getting targeted right now. Flame Flinger lost the taking of that expo because the queen went so far off path and it went down early. But a Dragon Rider and a Rock of Blue and some Blues come out of there. You'll finish clearing out that area of the base there as long as the Town Hall is not... Oh, it is activated. 
Town Hall activated, but the Queen's on to it. She's got it down, though. The Flame Flinger dropped out that Dragon Runner that might be able to get that Multi Inferno down, but the Expo locks onto it. It does go down. Queen's down to one healer. Gaku's in trouble here, but he's got the defensive heroes under control here, or at least one of them got the defensive Queen down. The defensive World Champion's still standing. He rages up the balloons. He doesn't need the rage again for the Queen, obviously. But how does he get this defensive World Champion out of the way here? He frees up the Scattershot. He got her down. The Royal Champion picked her up. Wait, the Royal Champion's still alive. I forgot about the Royal Champion. Hold up. He has a chance then. Warden of Royal Champion. Break off to the Multi-Inferno. He needs to pop this RC ability and get the air defense off of his Warden. And he saves the Warden. It's a triple. Gaku pulls it back. He's able to recover it. Secured the Town Hall. Lost the Flame Flinger value. Didn't even slow him down. Absolutely crushed. As Gaku picks that one up. And we're all tied up. Achilles coming in for NGT's second attack. These teams fight for survival here in this top 64. These 64 teams had to play through 60 different wars to get qualified into this tournament here today. And only 16 teams will survive at the end of this. Of which... They're going to have a double elimination, so a one loss doesn't knock them out of the competition. And then the next stage of the tournament, there's going to be a Swiss-style bracket where they'll have a they'll have an opportunity that they could technically take two losses. But the further you get along the tournament here, you'll need those extra breaks. <laughs> With all these good teams, you, you need a little bit of room for mistakes so we can really filter out the best of the best teams. And we can't just have one fluke war take down the top team, so... Everybody's on a fair playing field. A lot of different wars are going to play through. But with a million dollar prize pool waiting for them in the World Championship of Clash of Clans, you do not want to miss on any of these wars here. He's got the freeze and the poison down on the defensive CC, but he did end up going to ability as one of those rock components got away from him. But he's still okay. He's still okay. The queen still has that single inferno up ahead of her, but the hybrid's moving through, and hopefully the hybrid can wrap around and get over there to give her the additional support as she makes her way into the defensive heroes on the bottom side. She might be in trouble there, actually, because the defensive heroes and the single inferno might be too much for her to handle without her ability and any rages. So we'll see how she handles it when she gets over there. But if she does go down, keep an eye on where the healers are placed here because they might be able to transfer over and still pick up value even if the queen goes down. But the hybrid moving strongly into the middle base. There's more champion will pick up the multi inferno wall. The majority of the hogs and miners break all the way over to the eagle artillery. They're going to wrap wide to the outside here as he does end up freezing to protect the queen for now. But he only has one more freeze. I don't know if that freeze is better served to go to the queen or if you'd rather have it go to the hogs and miners and protect him from that scatter shot because he's going to lose his queen one way or another. And I feel like that was the wrong decision here. The healer ended up going to the headhunter. Our champion did end up dying out. Yeah, he probably should have just let the queen go down and let the healers transfer. And I feel like that was a mistake that is going to cost him here. But losing the queen ability was an even bigger problem. And one rocket balloon got away from him. And that's all it takes. The king will pop his ability down south. He'll surge across, get as much percentage as he can here. And he'll climb this one up into the 90s here before this king finally goes down. I think. Does he get does he get to 90? Okay, the, the king circles around there and he'll pick up that arch tower before the defensive king can lock onto him. Alright. So 90% here. And now it's an opportunity early for the Queen Walkers to pull ahead. Stars is live for the Queen Walkers. More anti-two-star bases. God now on defense here. Stars is gonna be coming at him with a Blizzard Lalo. His favorite attack here, especially against his anti two star bases. So, a good spot to drop here would maybe be on top of the battle builders and go after the Inferno and the Eagle Artillery, but that's not what he's going for. He's going to land near the bomb tower, but probably on the collector here. On the collector? Yeah, on the collector, because he wants to not hit the bomb tower with this super wizards. He wants to destroy the bomb tower over the wall so they don't stand on it when it explodes. Otherwise, you end up losing all the Super Wizards and you lose out on a lot of value here. But he's able to clear out a, a really solid chunk of the base there. Now, he did get the CC pull and Super Wizards will go all the way out to the edge of the base there. One more shot? Yeah, one more shot. All right, he's going to have the Queen move south by the looks of it. Unless he decides to go in and cut her off right now. She'll fight out the Lava Hound and so he has a little bit of time to think and decide. But 
And she's deployed on the south side of where the blizzard was used because you notice that the blizzard was not only able to clear the defenses that it was going after, but it cleared all the defenses from that point out to the edge of the, the base, including the trash building. So that forces the queen to go south on the base. And that's one of the biggest advantages of that strategy. You get a couple of big defenses, you get the CC pull, and you form the funnel for the heroes to dive into the base here. Now, the tricky part is, he needs to get the queen all the way to the town hall and he has to preserve her ability on her way in. Otherwise, he has to dive bomb the town hall with the Lalo and then the attack goes into a recovery mode. And you don't want that. The queen gonna take the jump while the king pops his ability. The world champion is working to cut her off. Mostly just defense is in the middle of the base there. So the world champion is doing some good work there, but she needs to get past that defensive grand warden. He makes her invisible. That'll do the trick there. The queen's under almost no damage as the king continues to tank that ground expo. And the queen is making her way in, not only picking up the, the scatter shot, she got the Multi-Inferno. In fact, she got two Multi-Infernos. And now she's picking up the Town Hall. He'll pop her ability right on target. And she'll take the Town Hall down. Scatter shots are controlled by the Lava Hounds. And now as they end up crossing over the, the Scatter Shot there, he gets the freeze down onto it. A couple of red bombs are going off in the middle of the base there. But there's the Ward ability. He's got the Headhunters on their way in. Under that Ward ability, they'll take out the Defensive Road Champion. Move over to the Queen. The Queen's already weakened up. They get hit by Giant Bombs. But that doesn't slow them down. They had the Ward ability protect. And it didn't last for much longer after that but the lalo is completely swarming the rest of the base here it's absolutely crushed that's picture perfect that's why stars is considered in my opinion the best player in all of clash of clans absolute insanity and is so clean every single time decida live for ngt legends now playing from behind Need a triple here to catch back up. We'll go ahead and drop in a Blizzard himself here, going after the scatter shot. The oh no, it's a Yeti bomb. I, it's not a Blizzard. Going for the cheaper version, but he still gets the Inferno and he gets the scatter shot down. He leaves at the Expo and he got the CC pull and he was able to secure a funnel. And we'll see what he can do with that now. He'll poison up the CC as it makes its way across there. The rocket balloons. That's a big advantage of. Using this as well as you end up having the rocket balloons waste their haste and the super minions use up a lot of their long range shots there. So that's why the blimp is by most people considered to be one of the strongest siege machines in all of Clash of Clans. That, the flame flinger and the log launcher are I think the three most used. And it's because of this one's ability to pull the CC, which really, really helps out. The world champion dives in after the multi inferno. Queen ends up chasing some ground skellies, but she's still going to stay on track here and she's going to go in. He does have a wall break that he does into the first one there, but that doesn't get him to the town hall. She needs to get these defenses under control. The queen will hopefully get that expo. Oh, he has to freeze again. And the multi inferno is shipping away, but he gets the multi down. The world champion to pick up the cannon. Town hall's not activated yet, so the queen should eventually get over there. But the king was able to clear out the rest of the area where the Yeti bomb was going in, but. Queen's getting topped off slowly while she fights off some storages. Ground skill is going to stall for just a moment. Eagle Artillery is activated. I think he realizes that the Queen has the Town Hall under control. And he can now make his way in with the Lalo. The Queen is about to lock out of the Town Hall. Her build is intact there. And that's exactly what he needs to do. But Lalo now sweeping in through the Eagle Artillery. The defensive king did get taken out by his king, and that makes so that he can put the warden onto the eagle artillery deployment area and send the headhunters, the headhunters through there. You have to make sure that wherever the headhunters are being deployed, the wardens are being deployed in the same spot, and you don't have to go through the defensive king to be able to make your way through that. But he's got the ward ability wearing off now. The hound is able to get the tanking on the scatter shot there, but he wouldn't freeze that as well. The single inferno stays standing. Electric Owl needs to take a shot at it right now. It's going to zap the Electric Owl, and he's gone. And he needs to get the warden to take the turn, but he's not going to. The single inferno is causing some problems here. He's still got a lot of blues, though. He might still be okay. If you could hit that haste, that'd be helpful, but he's got a lot of cleanup as well. I think he's still gonna pull this off. If he can get the if he can get the single to actually pop the lava hound, that'd be really helpful. It ends up soaking up some red bombs, and it will indeed pop that. And maybe the lava pups can take the last strike there at the blue stone. One way or one way or another, he's got enough here. He's got plenty of cleanup. Only a couple storages to go down, and NGT will stay hot on the tails of the Queen Walkers. Klaus is live! Coming in with a, another anti-two-star base on defense. So, just tons and tons of anti-two-star bases, but what does he have? What is Klaus using in his blimp here? 
He's got clone balloons and yetis in a in a bomb. That's weird. <laughs> That's out of the ordinary. Normally we see just cloned yetis or cloned air troops, but not a mix. That's a big chunk of the base they're taking out. Like that took out more than it's still going. The blues are still going. That got way more than blizzards typically get. And he got the defensive roar champion on top of that. What the heck, Klaus? That was that was really good. That was out of the ordinary and insane value. He's got I have no words for that. That's so much of the base they removed with that uh with that uh blimp. But he sends in a couple rocket balloons to go support some wizards over on the other side of the base there, and we'll try to get the cannon under control. Could uh, throw a minion over there if he wants to finish clearing that, but that drives the king into the base there. The ice golem is right there with it. The queen is going to step in and pick up that single inferno. Easy, easy approach here. King's going to end up circling around the town hall there and force the queen into the town hall. He also got the defensive queen. There's no base left. There's no base left. He still has a full army. <laughs> I mean, I guess he's got the bottom corner here, but he'll get an early, early ward ability to protect the blooms of the hound as he charges his way through that inferno there, gets the town hall with his queen, and the queen steps around the corner there and will pick up the sweeper as well. The hounds cross through. He's got three more blooms for the backside arch tower, and there's literally nothing left of this base here. That was insane, and he doesn't need his row champion. He'll throw her in because you never know if time ends up being a factor, and he'll clean it up a bit faster. That... He could have swagged a lot more than he did. He had the option to swag way, way, way more than he did here, but it doesn't matter. He picks up the triple and Klaus, what an absolute animal. That was, that was, that was crazy. Zamps is live for NGT Legends. It's an Electro Dragon attack here. He dives in with a couple of rocket balloons to go take out an air defense. That other uh, air defense up top here is going to be charged directly by the Electro Dragons. Catches the bulk of them inside of that Warden ability. That's why you start them grouped up there and get the early Warden ability so you can catch as many of them as possible and preserve their HP early into the attack there. It's very, very important for E-Drags to maximize their chances of success. Go attack the thickest, toughest area base there to start off and get those, get the heavy support there right away to clear as much of the threats immediately. But he's able to get the heroes to work in at the right side. They pick up another air defense over there. When he drags survives in the area, will make its way into that multi inferno. He rages it up, also catches the king inside of the rage. That works out nicely, but he's still got a lot of base left here. And the king going inside did end up pulling the defensive lava hound, and the electro dragons are starting to thin out here. At least he got the defensive roar champion out of the way here. He'll dive in and go take the town hall with the blimp, freezing up the sweeper, raging up to make sure it goes down. Got one freeze and the poison for his raw champion. Let's get the hound dealt with here. A lot of defense is left on the other side here. Might be in trouble. I don't know. I don't know. This is going to be hard to pull back with just the raw champion. I think there's too many defenses. Let me see. Single Inferno and Grand Warden over here. Two Expos on the other side with a scatter shot. Yeah. Yeah, and then tons of Archer Towers and Cannons in the mix as well. There's no way. Queen Walkers pull decisively in the lead. Kazuma's live for the Queen Walkers. Super Witches with a lot of light in here. I imagine whenever we try to do Super Witches, we're going after these Expos. He definitely didn't go after the area of the base that I expected him to. I thought he would go after the scatter shot, but you need seven lightning and a scatter shot. You need seven lightning and a quake to take out a scatter shot, so it is a bit more expensive. He's just going to go across the Eagle Artillery. Okay, I like this. A very, very quick entry into the base here didn't end up having to do a long word of walk and he's already down with super witches 30 seconds into the attack here very very fast pace for super witches but because he's up so close to the edge of the base he didn't have much clash to or trash to clear before he was able to have the funnel secured and now he's able to push his way off to the right side he's got a uh, a log launcher but he still needs to cut off the pathing on the right side so it throw down regular witches to start to clear on the outside open area and the king will come down as well he's gonna throw down a super wall breaker super wall breaker goes all the way in and does end up getting the wall open even with that double cannon right there a little bit risky to throw a super wall breaker into a double cannon but he, had, he actually ended up opening up two different walls here what the log launcher 
Log Launcher is actually coming in from the bottom as they try to get out both of these multi-infernos that he doesn't have clean access into. The defensive heroes will help pull the Super Witches into the base, and here comes the defensive CC. Rocket Bloom's out onto his king right now, and lots of other CC troops right there, but he get the poison. A little late on the poison, but there was a lot of other stuff going on, so can't blame him. I probably would have done the same thing, but I'm not Kazuma. <laughs> He's able to get the Infernos down with that with that Log Launcher. Both of those Multi-Infernos went down. Now the Yetis are going to come out, and they're going to go right over to that Ground Expo and help take the Scattershot on the back end of the base here. But the World Champion now deploying up the top quarter there. Valkyrie and a Wizard deploying the top quarter as well to follow the Royal Champion. The Inferno over there, but the Queen is going to lock onto it now. It's easy access through these open corners here. Be a maze for any other army to work their way through, but this is a very, very strong choice for this uh, style base. Especially since he has the entire bottom of the base to clear out so early. It worked out nice, but he'll rage up his road champion. He'll get the scatter shot down. It is going to be triple, and because he got those witches going so early in the attack here, he has plenty of time out the backside. Multiple super witches are still alive, and I want to remind people that super witches at Town Hall 14 are the same level as Super Witches at Town Hall 12. They're that tanky, and usually, if you can keep them decently protected, you're usually fighting the clock. So if you can get it moving quickly, then this can happen. Nice job, Kazuma. Really attack. Daniel now on offense absolutely must triple this attack here, and they need to have one of their bases hold Yuda to a one star. Not an easy task to do, but you never know. You never know. Skelly Bat Donut dropping onto the Scattershot and the CC. And also notice that the defensive queen is inside of the invisibility. Does not get the Scattershot down. The battle builder is able to recover it enough that it ends up saving it. At least you got the CC out of the way. You can usually recover when you miss the secondary target there but you usually can't recover when you miss the CC itself. Battle Builder's doing some good work there to repair things up. He'll drop in his queen. And that Ground Expo Scattershot is going to put a lot of damage on her, but he'll throw down his Royal Champion. She'll go in there and try to take those down. But she will be running to the defensive queen unless he gets the king in there to intercept. But the king is already on his way in from the bottom quarter. The queen is circling down south here. But she needs to make her way north and go up to the town hall. She recorrects now. Her champion gets a freeze and will get that expo down. And even carry across to the inferno as well. So, honestly, the recovery is going very, very nicely for him right now. Just want to get that single inferno down. And he does end up getting it. The queen will pick up the battle builder. He does have a yeti down the line. That's taking out the collector. And the... Oh, he's okay. I think he's okay here. The Queen's still got her ability attacked here. There's not a lot of damage in the corner. He's got some good support out there. Using the balloons. Using the giant. The Queen has full HP. She will have enough to round the corner there and go back into the town hall. But while it's going on, he's got the Lalo coming from the other side there. The Slammer goes into the Multi-Inferno. Finds a big Tesla farm, but... I'm not seeing any black bombs go off in that Tesla farm, so it's getting some really, really solid value. Freezes up the air defense and sneaks in a Dragon Rider to go pick up that air defense, and into the Eagle Artillery they go. Slammer opens up to another Dragon Rider and a couple of balloons, but the Lalo now sweeping to the top side here. He's got to get the defensive world champion out with the Headhunters in the ward ability, and he was able to. And for the scatter shot we go, that big pack of balloons is getting struck. He uses the freeze in the middle of the base there, but the Hound was taking the scatter shot. It quickly turns to the bigger pack now. And that's hurting. That's hurting a lot there. Warden's only surviving trooper on the scatter shot. The scatter shot did a lot of damage. It's up to the Dragon Riders to finish off the base here. A couple of balloons on the left side. They're trying to get to that expo, but they're not going to have enough to take it down. It's the Dragon Riders and the Warden they are going to have to finish it. Needs to get the Warden back onto defenses, and he will get his attention pulled as soon as those Dragon Riders sweep their way through. Looking good here. Electric Owl is tanking. One Dragon Rider goes down. Now the Warden has his attention pulled over there, and if he gets the Warden and Dragon Rider to survive, then he's got the triple, and he does indeed. Indeed. Absolutely clutch pull in that one through after the Skelly Donut ended up going to a miss and Daniel picks one up. But now, can they stop Yuda on the final attack and hold him to a one star with all these anti two star bases? They've been running them the whole war. Yuda 14, and indeed, it is an anti two star base. He's coming at it with a Queen Charge Dragon attack here with a Flame Flinger. I see the flame flicker started. Where is it? Top corner. Top corner. It's going to go after the 
cannons and the air defense there and form the funnel for the dragons or maybe for the queen charge to go to the middle of base there dragons are capable of taking the town hall but just like the lalo attacks when you run against these anti two-star bases you generally want the queen to be the one who takes the town hall down the queen is going to end up getting funneled to go south here away from the flame flinger we'll see what she can do down there could get the dragons to take the town hall it's definitely possible if you can get the funnel tight and that flame flinger is going to do a good job of of forming a pretty solid funnel up on that top side so it does start to create a lane between the flame flinger and the queen and here comes our first dragon that seems like he's going for that lane to push right into the town hall queen will get the eagle artillery lots and lots of black bombs are pulled by those blues there big big value out of that that's gonna save a lot of dragons as he makes his way forward, but the Queen's going into the Scattershot Fire, so she has to rage up. That Grand Explosive still chipping away at her. Switches over to her Unicorn, so he loses the Unicorn, but he's probably going to lose it anyways to the multi front of the Scattershot. Regardless, Flame Flinger does open up to a couple of Rocket Bloons and a Dragon Rider that'll join on the left flank. Dragons are going right up the gun to the base there. Rage them up. Absolutely must secure the Town Hall. The Town Hall goes down, and the Queen Walkers will advance to the next round of this top 64 tournament here to compete for the world championship of clash of clans golden tickets and the town hall is secured that will lock in the win and he's still moving strong here one dragon sticks behind and saves the healers and it takes out that multi inferno Royal champion drops in the bottom base here he's got the skeleton spell to give the protection the king is uh, alive in that area as well king and Royal champion came in late to push the queen in and they did their job they are now support into the back end here. Not a lot of dragons left here, but Rogue Champion trying to push through that single Inferno. The Skeleton Spell wears off, but he replaces it with an Invisibility. And that should do the trick there. Pop that RC ability, and it is a triple and a perfect war for the Queen Walkers. All right. Their first victim has been claimed. We'll see how far they can go. Rather than going with like a Blizzard, I thought it was going to be a Blizzard. Or a cloned Yeti Bomb, but he decided to clone a Balloons, and they took out like half the base. Crazy, crazy value. I guess the bulk of the damage in that area was just in the scatter shot, and he just put the Yeti down to take out the defensive row champion inside of the rage. And then the clone balloons just ended up spreading backwards and ended up working to the outside of the base there. So, like, they just kept on going for days all across that entire area of the base there. Like, that Yeti bomb took out more than a quadrant of the base. Our clone balloon Yeti bomb. <laughs> that's that's wild.